Hey there, this is Dave Lemieux, and I'm here to talk about uh, Dave's Picks Volume 35. It's our seaside chat, although we're in a bit of a quarantine situation, as many of us are. So um, it's kind of near the sea, but it's not seaside. Uh, hope you don't mind. The last one was done from here as well. Um, so this is the announcement for Dave's Picks Volume 35. Hard to believe we're 35. I remember when we did Dick's Picks 35. That was the houseboat tapes from 1971. Well, that seems like a lifetime ago. And it was, what, 2004. And then we did the road trips for a while. We did 17 of those. And now here we are, 35 into the Dave's Picks with many more to come. We've got uh, a great thing lined up for 36. Uh, we just kind of got that one all figured out. Uh, it's a big one. And then... 37 we're beginning to put a lot of thought into the first one of 2021 but this one in particular as you're probably aware if you're watching this you'll know that it is uh april 20th it's 420 uh it's april 20th 1984 the middle night of a three-night run at the philadelphia civic center a rare visit to philadelphia where the dead did not play at the spectrum um i believe the spectrum was in use you know what it was in use because the flyers were uh playoff bound and i guess the uh philadelphia the 76ers also in the nba uh were uh, also heading to the playoffs and if it was a, a kind of situation where when bands did these um spring tours the venues had to be blocked off way in advance out of the possibility of a team making the playoffs and going far into them so a lot of times this happened. Um, it's a big reason why, you know, the dead, it was easy for them to book, uh, you know, two weeks at Madison Square Garden. But as kind of October, November rolled on, you know, it, it got a little harder because NBA and, and, and NHL were, you know, well underway at that time. So, um, so Philadelphia Civic Arena, the Dead Civic Center, the Dead had played there in 1974, two nights with the Wall of Sound, released as Dick's and other Dick's Picks, uh, number 31, a wonderful release. Um, and then uh, they came back in 1984 for three nights, sold out, more than 10,000 a night. Uh, we saw the production papers for it, fascinating seeing how these were marketed and the sellout and the number of, of promotional or comps. Uh, just a really wonderful uh, batch of material in the archives. Um, so the show itself, uh, I love this tour. I'm a big fan of 1984 Dead. It's one of these years that when they were playing well, they were playing extremely well. And while it might not have the kind of consistent greatness as something like um, 1989 or 1977 or 72, there are a lot of really good shows in 1984. Um, some of my favorite ones from the 80s are from 84, including this one. Uh, there's a couple from June that uh, wouldn't surprise me if we saw some of those come out someday um, from the June, July, 84 time. Uh, of course, Augusta, 10, 12, 80. There's a really loud seaplane flying over. Uh, there's always something, right? Remember last time I did it back here, there was a uh, street sweeper. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the middle night in Philadelphia, really one of uh, my favorites, one of the best, I think, of the year. Uh, magnificent show, sounds great, terrific set list. Um, and if you're watching this, you probably already know, or have looked up the uh, set list, but we put a few songs up at the Dead's Listening Party at dead.net. Certainly worth checking that out. It's really sunny. I don't usually wear sunglasses and hats during these, but it's really sunny out today. Um, so, um, kick those off. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so the show itself, the first set, um, what I've always found with 84, there's kind of three distinct parts of the show. There's the first set, the pre-drums, and the post-drums, part of the show. And for this show in particular, I find all three segments of the concert to be exceptional. And the first set opens with one of the biggest, media's longest versions of Feel Like a Stranger I've ever heard. And Stranger's one of those songs that... I just, I love it. I, and it's one of those songs that seems to always be really good. Um, you know, I've heard some mediocre versions of a lot of songs. I haven't really heard any bad versions of Feel Like a Stranger. Some are better than others for sure, but this one is really top notch, very media, it's kind of shakedown esque. Um, and then it's followed up by When This Song Is Good. It's one of my favorite Garcia sung songs. Uh, it's an old traditional. Dad have been playing it since, you know, 65, 66. Cold Rain and Snow. Wonderful stuff. And the rest of the set I find to be a great mix of both Jerry's songs and Bob's songs. And we got a terrific Cumberland Blues and a Little Red Rooster and Beat It On Down the Line. And uh, a, a terrific Brown Eyed Women, one of my favorite from the era. Um, it's one of those ones that's precision. It's played perfectly throughout the, the Brown Eyed Women. Very powerful, very great energy throughout. 
And then uh, it ends, the first set ends, oh, there's also a great Esau on here. We get a Brother Esau. I love that song. Um, a lot. Uh, really one of my favorite Weir Barlow mid-80s songs. Started playing it in 83, dropped it in fall of 87. Um, love Esau. Um, but the first set ends with one of my favorite versions of uh, Let It Grow from this era, from kind of the kind of early to mid-80s. It got, you know, it's a song that morphed a little bit, the 1976 versions with the drum break, uh, the powerful ones from 77, some great ones in the fall, there's a great one in um, uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Um, really wonderful song throughout the years, Let It Grow, as well as the ones when they were attached to Weather Report Suite back in 73, 74. Um, so we get a great Let It Grow to end the set. I love this version. It's one of those ones that's really driven and focused. And that's something I love about 84 Grateful Dead is when they were focused, when they were on, when everybody, all six of them were on, and Brent is, you know, he's been in the band five years by now, right? He joined almost exactly five years to the day, uh, April 22nd of 1979. Um, so he'd been in five years, so he was completely ensconced as part of the defining Grateful Dead sound at this time. Um, but I find that when they're all on, they are like one, as they always are. That's the one the thing I love about the Dead is when they're really on and they're playing the group mind and they're listening to each other, um, they play as one. And that's this Let It Grow is one of those. Now the second set, I keep using the word favorite and best uh, of this era, and uh, the second set opens with one of my favorite and one of the best, in my opinion, uh, versions of Scarlet Fire from this era. And again, just as I kind of mentioned that Dead Shows you know, have three distinct parts, they got the first set, the pre-drums, and the post-drums, uh, Scarlet Fire is like a microcosm of that, where you've got Scarlet, you've got Fire, and in the middle you've got this incredibly important part of this combination, and that's the jam that joins the two. And this, for all of them, uh, I think, um, is all three aspects are perfectly played. I think the fire is just monumental. Uh, jam after jam and peak after peak and Jerry's singing. Scarlet are going the same thing where they hit the peaks and the jam and Jerry's just singing so well. The rest of the band is just keeping up with everything. It's perfect. And then the transition jam. Magnificent. Love the Scarlet Fire. Really, uh, something that I've listened to this Scarlet Fire dozens and dozens of times. I don't know if I've listened to it hundreds of times, but certainly dozens and dozens. And I find something new and exciting every time I listen to it. And that's something I always look for in, in good Grateful Dead music. Um, and then we follow that up with a Rip and Sampson and Delilah that rather than go into another Jerry song, um, we get... Uh, a really wonderful drums in space, both about 10 minutes long. Space at this time, I like 1984 spaces. Um, it's well before MIDI came in five years later. So it's just pure instruments and sounds and noises and improv. And that's something I love about drums in space. I know, you know, I've seen the debate online. Oh, do you skip drums in space? I was like, that's, I mean, I don't know if it's my favorite part of, of a show in this era, but it's certainly something that I pay very close attention to always because that's the moment when the dead are truly improvising, just as the, the sequence between Scarlet and Fire was. Um, drums in space, and you know, everything else is quite structured, like within a song like Big River or Let It Grow. These are orchestrated songs that have very distinct parts, and they stick with them, and they might jam them a little more, but in terms of pure improvising, um, creating something on the spot, Drums in space, that's that's where it's at. So you get this great drums and a great space. And then we get a fairly straightforward post-space sequence of, of uh, well, Miracle uh, ends with Ran Around Good Lovin', but um, The Morning Dew. And there's some good Morning Dews in 1984, quite a few of them. It was a year that it, it certainly wasn't a rare song, and it was played really, really well. Um, so a great Morning Dew, and you'll hear how into it Jerry is. He's really having fun with it. And of course, what would a 1984 show of this caliber be without an encore of probably their most popular song um, of any era, uh, Keep Keep Your Day Job? Um, no, really though, I know a lot of people aren't too big a fan, but I've always liked Day Job because it allowed the band to really play some precision music and play it really well. And when, again, it's one of the, it's like a song, like any song, that when they're playing well, everything is good. And this is one of those songs that, uh, because they're playing so well this night, the, it's precision. And Jerry's singing it really well, the background vocals, but Jerry's solo is so good. Um, Brent sounds amazing. Bobby sounds good throughout this whole show. Um, so, it, I mean, I think some people don't quite give 84 the chance it deserves. And this is something I love 
about uh, 1984 is that when you do give it a chance, the number of people, I'll say this, I'm filming this a couple days before we uh, uh, put it on sale. It's already been announced. People know it's coming. And the number of comments I've seen from people saying, hey, you know, I, I gave this show a chance now that it's been announced, and I'm blown away by how good it is. I didn't expect a 1984 show to, to move me this much, and it is. It's moving, it's powerful, it's high energy, it's enjoyable as heck. So uh, I do completely, uh, I mean, recommend it. Hopefully you've paused it by now, this video, and gone to buy it, because it'll sell out pretty quickly. They tend to sell out in a day or two, sometimes a few hours, sometimes more, sometimes less. But um, I think, what do we do, 22,000 of them? Um, but they go pretty quickly, so if you're interested, do check it out. Now, this is a uh, Dave's Picks. We don't always do this, um, but there's quite a bit of bonus material on here from the first night, from April 19th, the first night at the Philly Civic. Uh, with Specifically, we got a great, ch phenomenal China rider, actually. Uh, again, one of my favorite and best of the era. And then we get an estimated Terrapin, and those are two of my favorites from the from any era, estimated and Terrapin. When I'm asked, oh, what are your top 10 Grateful Dead songs? And I certainly always put estimated profit up there as well as Terrapin Station. Um, so, and, and they do move around, my favorite songs, but I love estimated and Terrapin. And then we've also got the, the post space with a, a really wonderful sequence, uh, including a Wharf Rat that'll knock your socks off, seriously. Um, so we got quite a bit, probably uh, over an hour, maybe almost an hour and a half. Maybe an hour and a half, almost hour, 20 minutes, I don't know. Quite a bit of, um, oh, over an hour of uh, bonus material from the 19th. So you're getting the full show from the 20th and a good chunk of the second set from the 19th. Wonderful stuff. So check it out. It's uh, Dave's Picks of uh, 35, um, available at dead.net. It'll sell out quickly. We've gone into production on 36. It's a really cool one coming up actually something very special about it but we'll get to that in a couple of months um, you don't want to stay tuned for that and what else can i say about this um check it out if you kind of are shying away from 84 just because of the rap it gets sometimes or maybe you've heard some mediocre stuff very possible give this one a try uh from the stranger uh through the whole second set the the, the let it grow in the first set the cumberland the brown-eyed women the cold rain and snow in the first um really wonderful stuff. The Scarlet Fire is really going to blow you away. Uh, I mean, I couldn't say for sure, but everybody I know who's heard the Scarlet Fire is um, a huge aficionado of it. Um, and then the, the Morning Dew is also, again, they played it quite a bit in 84, and I think because Jerry was really feeling it, he was digging playing that song. So check it out. Dave's Picks 35, available dead.net. Uh, get it sooner than later. They sell out quickly. And uh, again, sorry this isn't a seaside. Again, it's a, it's a quarantine thing, but... Um, Hope you don't mind the red chair, the, the trees, nice sunny day. There's no street sweeper. There was an airplane going by, but otherwise we're good. So thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it, and we all do. And uh, you're going to like this one, I think. It's a good one.